Hey guys, Bridge here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create responsive grids using Figma. Now, grids are really useful for us designers and also for developers in order to create designs which are both responsive, adaptable, and work well all together. So without further ado, let's jump right into Figma. And the way that you create a grid is actually really simple. You simply have to go under the frame tool and uh, just select a frame. In this case, we're going to use the desktop. So let's go ahead and uh, let's uh, just have this frame. And as you can see in the right uh, column, you're going to have this layout grid section. And this is where we are going to create our grid. And just before we get started, I want to remind you that I recently launched a free course on how to get started in UI UX design. So basically I'm sharing uh, my experience of uh, working over 10 years in this field and the advice that uh, I wanted to receive when I first started out uh, in the field. You're also going to receive uh, uh, free source files uh, from the Figma and uh, Sketch and Adobe XD software tutorials, which uh, I'm uh, making on my YouTube channel. So without further ado, now let's go back to the video. So simply click on it, uh, or you can click on the plus, uh, it's going to yield the same result. And as you can see, we just created our very first grid within this frame. So the way that uh, you can change the grid is uh, by simply going and clicking on these uh, um, squares right here. And as you can see, you can uh, change the size and also um, things like, uh, you know, the color and uh, also the opacity. So basically you can create the grids of uh, any sorts uh, visually. And uh, one of the most um, important things to consider is that uh, uh, there aren't just grids, uh, but a lot of the times as designers, you're actually going to use columns. And uh, personally, when it comes to um, using, you know, creating websites or web apps, uh, I'm actually using columns uh, more than grids. Usually it's going to be 12 columns and uh, maybe I'm going to make it lower in opacity. And uh, the reason why you want uh, the grid not to be, or the columns not to be with uh, high levels of opacity is simply because it's going to collapse uh, and collide with the design. So you actually want to see what you're designing, um, but still have a basic reference. So as you can see, you can set the count over here. And what I like to do is also to set a margin uh, in between uh, the left and the right. So you can adjust that from here very easily. And uh, you can also select if you want uh, the columns to be set on the left, on the right, uh, on the center or stretching. Um, usually I always keep uh, the default, which is stretch. And uh, you can also set the cutter, which is essentially the space uh, in between one column and the other. So if you make the cutter bigger, you can see how the columns are going to shrink simply because we're going to have uh, you know more pixels in between. Uh, and uh, I can make them smaller. And as you can see, this is going to be uh, more of a sweet spot. Uh, this, this is more of the typical scenario that you're actually going to, to work with for the most part. So yeah, usually I would set uh, something around these lines uh, so that uh, um, I also like a, a neutral color because again, I don't want uh, to you know start designing and uh, having the, uh, the grids uh, or the columns uh, collide too much with uh, the actual design. I want to focus on the design for the most part. Now, that being said, uh, um, the cool thing in Figma is that uh, the um, columns and the grids are automatically responsive. So as you can see, as I'm resizing the frame, uh, it's pretty much going to be responsive straight out of the box. So this is really cool. Now, another thing that uh, you might want to consider is uh, having a rows. And the reason being is that, uh, of course, columns are going to help you out uh, when it comes uh, to organizing the elements uh, horizontally. But when it comes to the vertical adjustments, um, what I like to do is in some projects is to actually go ahead and add rows. And uh, I'm usually going to create like a, a lot of different rows and uh, just have uh, um, maybe like a, a smaller amount of, uh, of gathering between or actually zero in this case, um, just to basically have uh, some uh, 
um, other points of reference uh, between the elements. So this is going to definitely be useful in, uh, in some instances. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be really easy to, for example, copy this, uh, uh, this frame and then create uh, maybe uh, a smaller one. And as you can see, <laughs> you can essentially create uh, different, uh, uh, different sizes right away. But uh, uh, the more we bring this grid uh, in, uh, in, in smaller width, uh, the easier it's going to be to understand that uh, there's going to be some issues uh, such as in mobile. So my recommendation is to always adapt uh, the grids uh, and uh, you know the calls and, and the rows. Sometimes I'm referring as grid, but it's essentially all one thing um, based on that specific frame. So usually, for example, when it comes to the columns in mobile, um, well, first of all, we're going to remove uh, all this margin. And usually I like to have just uh, two columns simply because it's going to be easier to work with in mobile. And the same would be true, or actually the same adjustments uh, um, principle would be true for tablet. So for example, I can keep it uh, at uh, maybe just eight uh, columns and uh, remove some margin and uh, yeah that would be that would be pretty much it so of course um, another thing which is really important that i recommend uh, each and every designer to do is whenever you're setting these up uh, and uh, you're creating a project for the client uh, is to check with the developers who are going to develop uh, the website uh, or the web app or the mobile app uh, Check with them uh, regarding the grid uh, that you just created and do it from the start because you don't want to create a grid uh, in Figma and uh, create maybe like 10 web pages and then figure out that the developer maybe doesn't like that grid system or they're using a framework which has uh, some specific you know grids uh, or numbers of columns and all those things. So you can essentially have a quick check uh, uh, by simply sending over uh, the file. Figma is amazing in that regards because uh, it allows you to have a shareable link. So you can easily check with them regarding these things. And uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty easy and straightforward. And uh, <laughs> you have peace of mind essentially moving forward in the project. So that would be pretty much it. Um, another thing that I would like to uh, recommend to you is uh, essentially to uh, check snap to geometry and stop snap to objects because this is essentially going to enable you to have uh, i think it's it's opened up by default but you can easily like snap uh, into place the uh, elements into places in the grids so it's just going to be easier in a lot of instances and uh, you can also adjust uh, um, things uh, like uh, the nudge amount so you can essentially uh, decide the small nudges and the big nudges. So yeah, that would be pretty much it. Hope this video was helpful. And uh, I want to remind you that uh, if you're interested in learning more about uh, grids, uh, um, there are these uh, two really good uh, um, posts. Uh, on, uh, the first one is on uh, UX Planet and uh, it's getting started with uh, grids in digital design. And uh, also this one here by UX Collective, uh, I think it's uh, really, really cool. So I'm going to leave uh, the links uh, of uh, these blog posts. And uh, when it comes to books, uh, um, if you're interested in learning more about grids, uh, personally, I remember when I was a student, I, I used to uh, read this book right here and uh, it was really extensive and it, gave you like a, a, it gives you a really good foundation. I'm not going to leave any affiliate links. I'm not really interested in that. And just a personal suggestion of mine, if you want to consider a book on grids. But um, yeah, that would be pretty much it. Hope this video was helpful. And I want to remind you that on my channel, I have over 500 videos on uh, free UI UX design advice, uh, sharing my over decade of experience in this field. So feel free to check it out if you're interested and I'll see you in the next video.